Welcome to African News Roundup. Starting off the segment, vehicles were stranded on Sunday in Nairobi, the capital of Kenya, as the devastating toll of heavy rains and floods in Kenya continues to mount. Since mid-March, 35 people have died in floods that have affected over 100,000 individuals, according to the UN, citing figures from the Red Cross in its latest update. Floods have been reported in residential areas of Nairobi as rivers overflowed on Sunday evening. The Kenyan government agency responsible for roads warned Nairobi residents to avoid flooded highways, including the one leading to the coastal city of Mombasa. And apparently at least 40,000 people are displaced in 21 out of the country's 47 counties. There have also been reports of mudslides and floods in western Kenya. Now those living along the Nairobi River are urged to relocate to a higher ground. 51 people were seized from a passenger bus that was washed away by floodwaters on a bridge in the northern area earlier in April. Proper drainage should be installed in order to prevent further rain-related issues and the government should offer safe haven and medical attention to individuals who have already been impacted. Still on African news, Nigeria has said it is seeking up to $2.25 billion in the World Bank loans in a state statement by Finance Minister Wale Edun. According to the Finance Minister, following the IMF World Bank spring meetings in Washington, D.C., the Nigerian government is also aiming to issue diaspora bonds later this year to attract foreign exchange into the country. The World Bank loans would comprise of one point. $5 $5 million in development policy financing and $750 million in program for resource financing. According to Edun, the bank's board is scheduled to convene in June to consider approving the request. This year, Nigeria experienced a shortage of foreign exchange, which caused the value of Naira to fall to record lows in relation to the US dollar. However, it has since increased. Despite the finance minister's recent announcement that the government had cut federal borrowing from the central bank in half, the nation still faces record levels of debt, high unemployment and central bank financing. When the money is approved by the World Bank, we are hopeful that it will be used as planned. And finally on African news, asylum seekers, including a child, have died while crossing English Channel from France to Britain in an overcrowded small boat just hours after the British government approved a bill to deport some asylum seekers to Rwanda. The boat carrying 112 people set out from Wimrox, about 32 kilometers southwest from the French port of Calais, to cross one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. This year, over 6,000 individuals have entered Britain on overcrowded small boats running the risk of being beaten by waves as they attempt to reach the country's shores. The government of the United Kingdom has been trying for approval of isolation policy to send asylum seekers to Rwanda for the past two years. Overnight, the UK Parliament finally approved legislation authorizing the deportations. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak stated that he anticipated the first flights to begin operating in 10 to 12 weeks, allowing time for additional legal challenges from advocacy groups, unions and charities. A sound economic solution should be implemented in Rwanda for the people to avoid risking their lives in order to die so as they will not be compelled to live their own comfortable surroundings and their convenient lives. But the British government should ought to constantly assist in making migration or relocation simple for people, preventing the need for a boat ride. And that's all I have for you on African News Roundup. Until next time, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.